Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today, I've got something a little special for you. Just got back from a road trip, and here she is. My 2014 Mahindra 85P tractor. Got a pretty darn good deal on this. Shout out to the seller, uh, ID, no full name. Came with a um, bush hog, uh, baling spear, or moving hay bales strapped down, and uh, a blade for the back, which I desperately need for this gravel driveway. It's getting a bit overgrown and needs some uh, tending to. Let's go ahead and get this uh, unstrapped and uh, off the trailer. You should have seen the drive which we had to do to get back here. We bought this down in Virginia and uh, it's pretty much nothing but mountains between here and there and it was about a four hour drive of nothing but 25 mile an hour curves up and down. And I tell you what, some people are preferential to certain brand names, Ford, Dodge, whatever. I love my Dodge one ton dually. That thing with that Cummins engine in there, it can pull and pull. Uh, unlike the, I mean, you guys might have seen the bulldozer video. If not, link down in the description. Uh, check that one out. And that, uh, at the time, I thought I was under the max gross weight. Come to find out later on, especially with all you guys' comments, um, I was way overweight. Well, a good bit overweight. And this truck still handled it. I was very impressed with the truck for doing that. And then hauling this, which is 8,000 pounds. The trailer's out 8,000 pounds. We're at 16,000 pounds with a couple little accessories. Nah, let's call it uh, just under 20,000. Well, that thing's rated for, I believe it's 27,500 pound towing capacity. And uh, it does no problem pulling this, especially on a straightaway. But these mountains going up and down Never overheated any brakes or transmission or anything like that, because obviously I'm underweight now. Uh, but uh, it was not the greatest, funnest drive in the world, especially when uh, the last two hours was in the dark. And then coming down my road, which has lots of limbs and stuff like that, uh, I took it really slow, about seven, eight miles per hour, <laughs> to getting up to 10 miles per hour when I could see the branches. I didn't want to tear up the, the top cab up there let me finish getting this off and then i'll give you a little walk around video of the tractor itself All right, well, that wasn't too scary. <laughs> so she did really well. Now I'm gonna show you the tractor. All right, so here's a little walk around of the tractor. It's a Mahindra 85P M Power 2014 model. Uh, it's got a lot of nice features on it. Things that I like is the detachable uh, front loader bucket it comes with uh, little kickstand legs that are up inside here they simply attach to these points uh, right over there and right here and then you disconnect the pins and the hydraulic lines you can take it off i don't know that i'll ever take it off but it's nice to have that option should i need it 
Uh, it has the quick disconnects up front here, so you can remove the bucket and uh, put on, I also got with it a hay bale spear, but what I really want is some forks. I really needed the forks for uh, another item that I recently purchased. I'm not gonna say what that item is, but that is another video to come. Um, someone had welded some hooks on there. I was really glad for that. <laughs> That's what I used for getting that off the truck. Uh, I wish that they had stuck with the same type I like this type right here that's got an actual hole and this one over here they use one that's supposed to have a pin in it or something. Uh, I would have liked to have had three of them all the way across uh, for something else we were doing. I like that there's work lights both front and back as well as uh, you can see the headlights here and some extra lights up there. Uh, it is four wheel drive. That was uh, something that I absolutely required because I live in a mountainous area and definitely need it. Um, on this side, you've got your diesel tank. Mine right now is full and it came with this um, Hardy uh, 1072 brush hog, brush hog. Um, and there was a few things that needed to be worked on on it, nothing major. Uh, this bolt right here was broken, so I got another bolt. Uh, I need to tighten that one up. And uh, this one up here was kind of broken and it needs to have a sleeve in there. And I lubed up a lot of the back hardware here already. The uh, PTO seal is leaking. Uh, I can see it dripping here. I need to order a new PTO seal and uh, let's see what else on here i realized that these bars are actually bent they're supposed to be from down here the slight bend where the nut and bolt go through and then go straight up there to that slight bend where it attaches to the front part but these two bends here and here are not supposed to be there so i'm going to take that off and uh, re-bend those and check the blades see what they look like uh, I've greased some points on here, and as I grease um, the Zert fittings, I'm putting on little caps, one, to keep it cleaner, and two, to make it quick for me to uh, figure out where I need to do grease points. Um, interestingly enough, there was one up front here uh, for the U-joint, and on the back, there is a U-joint, but I can't quite get to it. Uh, so I'm going to have to figure out a way to get in there to get that one done. Uh, let's see. Fully enclosed cab, obviously. And uh, this little tank on the back is a washer fluid reservoir for the back wiper. And you know, where is a back wiper? Hmm. Don't know. That's interesting. Maybe it's for the washer fluid for the front wiper. I see some plugs here i was just looking that one's kind of hanging out like that and this one's hanging i'm not sure what that is for but you have a couple of work lights in the back here and there the antenna is hanging down i've heard that the reception on these are not very good but i'm out in the country so i wouldn't get much of a reception anyways uh, that's for the radio inside which is missing the previous owner took it out the tires are all in fantastic shape for being the original tires. They are liquid filled and um, that's supposed to be for weight or something like that. Uh, let's see, front tires look great as well. And on this side in the cab, this one actually stays open. The other one, the strut is blown out. This cab looks really good, really clean. So you can got a rear view mirror. It's got side mirrors as well, which like to hit on shrubbery and stuff. That's where the battery box is at to access this. You pull the pin down here and then uh, the stairs push down and then you can just open that up and gain access to it. There's some wing nuts that hold the cover on. 
Um, let's see. All right, let's go inside the cab. Like I said, I've got a strut here that's off at the moment because I'm getting another one. I took that one in to see if I can get it replaced. Uh, air ride seat, a um, lot of seat adjustments. Uh, one of the things that I know is not working properly is this parking brake and I desperately need that working. So that's uh, high on the agenda. It's probably the next item. You got a cup holder, ashtray, uh, entrance light, speaker for the stereo. One of the things I like is the step light. There's a little courtesy step light right there as you come in. Windshield wiper, air conditioning. That's where the radio goes. This is for your, uh, to raise and lower your accessories on the back. Uh, we've got, um, shows a picture of a deer or something jumping. I think that's for a headset. 12 volt accessory, cigarette lighter. On this side, you've got the work lights. Uh, fuse box, fuse panel, kind of hard to see, but fuse is in there. Speakers uh, for the radio. Vent. There are filters on the sides, up inside, uh, let me go to this side. Up inside there, there are filters on each side. Just remove the wing nuts and clean those. All right, we've got the air conditioning controls up here. So that's for the fan speed, uh, for the heater, air conditioner, uh, to have the compressor kicking on and off. Otherwise, it's just a fan. Right now, I've got outside air, and then you can switch it over here to recirc air. So all these vents work uh, along here, here, and here. There's for your windshield wiper, and then the washer. And up here, of course, you got a lot of idiot lights and you got your fuel, RPM gauge, and uh, temperature control. So while I was operating this, I noticed that temperature doesn't work at all. The gauge doesn't. And the high temp light one time started blinking on me. And best I could tell that blinking um, is telling the computer, well, the computer thinks that you're not getting any temperature. So it starts blinking, saying that there's a problem. Uh, I know that it's the sensor that's out. So I know that I've got to fix that. The AC compressor is not kicking in. So I've got to find out why that is. It could be a multitude of things, everything from the clutch is burnt out to uh, too low of pressure of Freon to the switch not working that it's a vast array of things that could be a problem so i'll have to find that out this is for your headlights um you've got a couple of controls over here uh headlights turn signals uh this here lever is for going forward a neutral and then back you can see it right there there's obviously a horn on here but does it work when the power is turned off uh, down below you have a, um, a a pedal that you push so that you can move the steering wheel up or down and then there is hazard switch here for your hazards and uh, of course you got a clutch hydrostatic power system on here so that's your clutch. You got your individual brakes left and right. And this, if you're using the throttle a lot, um, you can use it manually with this. Now the previous owner told me that this is not working. There's a cable messed up or something. I don't know. But normally this is your throttle. This is for your bucket. Uh, pull it for up, down, and then this here, pulling it to the left, will cause the bucket to come up. To the right, bucket come down. And there's a little bit of slop in that, more than I like. 
Um, and these are some other controls which I haven't had the chance to use. It has to do with the float, neutral, or to raise and lower uh, things in the back. And let's see. Okay, so to make this thing go forward, you've got a differential range, which is neutral, low, medium, and high. Then over here is, you can think of it as like your shifter for first, second, third, fourth, and neutral. And then you have to put it in gear. So basically three things to make it go, because if this differential is in neutral, you're going nowhere. If you want four-wheel drive, okay, to go to four-wheel drive, you push this, uh, pull it up, I think. No, push it down to go into four-wheel drive. Pull it up to stay in two-wheel drive. To engage your PTO, it's this lever right here. And then there is a heel right there. This heel lever will actually lock your tires so that they turn at the exact same rate. Obviously the ignition key. And that's about it for the walk around here you can open the back window either a little bit like this just give a little bit of air or you can let it go and open it all the way all right so that's about it um, There's also a coat hook here, so if you come out in the winter time and then you turn your heat on, you can take your coat off, set it there. I like the fact that there's a place to set my cell phone. Uh, I could put it on the other side where I'd have a charger. The one thing I don't like is how shallow this is. I mean, even a bottle of water will flop over and fall down onto the floor while you're going because there's nothing holding it. Mm. I'm wondering what's underneath here. Or how far down I could go uh, if I drilled this out and put some type of insert sleeve in there. It would be nice to have another pocket or pouch here somewhere. Like a little glove box to put things like, well, gloves. Or maybe something else that we like to conceal to carry. Um, let's see. Yeah, so over here there's really no place to to set a cell phone so if i got a stand or something like that uh, i could put it over here and then have a, a cell phone charger right here i do want to put a stereo in here just a cheap one a little you know anywhere from 20 to 50 dollars stereo something that'll do bluetooth because it's pretty quiet in this in this cab and of course you have a door over here to open the door very simply squeeze that door opens this one has strut on it so it'll stay open that's the way the other side should work but doesn't right now all right that's it for the interior part of the walk around so at the end of this video i'll give a spec sheet about this tractor just so you can find out more for those of you who really like it uh, what I'm going to put next is the various things that I'm going to do to this tractor. Uh, like I said, I've already done some things with the bolt, lubrication of that, another bolt there. Uh, I'm going to straighten those out. And um, the new temperature sensor, the door strut, and I'm going to get that emergency parking brake working again. And lastly, the air conditioner. We're getting ready to go into winter. It's starting to turn to fall right now. It's 2024. We're in September. So I don't really need the air conditioner right now, but that'd be an overwinter project to uh, find that out. But right now, it's running. It's working. Um, I just don't like the fact that that temperature sensor starts going off. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed the little brief walk around. I'm really excited to have a tractor on the ranch. Uh, we're going to put it to good use. Uh, the next video you see on this is going to be doing different types of uh, fixes on it and repairs. Thanks for watching. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe.